Greetings, my fellow free below sovereign thinkers. Thank you for tuning in to the L3 podcast. My name is Craig Trans, meeting from the beautiful Swampy Mangrove, South Florida. And today's date is Saturday, April 11th, 2020. I'm just like going through here on my Twitter page. And this is today, a year ago, one year, one year in prison. In London, after legal seizure from asylum and embassy, we talk about Julian Assange. So I'm like looking around here, and it says here, one year in max security prison in London, nearly ten years arbitrarily detained at, in the UK, over two years prevented from work as a journalist, over four years since UN ruled he must be freed and compensated, persecuted for speaking truth to power, as. Bean, the summer, uh, Somerset Bean, that's his Twitter page, posted this. And, um, yeah, it says, yeah, like right here, about the numbers one year in prison after a legal seizure from asylum and embassy. 3,412 days arbitrarily denied in the UK. 1,526 days. Since you and ruling that Assange should be released and compensated, 744 days gag and prevented from and prevented from doing journalism. Kangaroo Court, 63,832 days. U.S. prison sentence awaits Assange for encouraging a source to provide truth for information and for publishing that information. Hashtag free press and free Assange. I don't know, I haven't really talked about him as much, but I will do things that periodically. Some people may call him an arrogant man, but when it comes to free, free speech and press, we have to defend him, regardless. I oppose the extradition. As far as I'm concerned, it has no merit. If William Barr is intelligent, has integrity, he'll say no to it. But I'm not, I won't be surprised he's part of the whole status quo club. I opposed his nomination, wrote to the senators, because he was a pro-big government. Even Randy Reaver, that's a very good example. He praised the ATF for what they've done. You can look it up yourselves, folks. Self-explanatory. And war and whistleblowers, war and the press. A lot of folks have been de- have been killed for it, murdered, kidnapped, tortured, blown the whistle. You don't want other Pentagon Papers. And some folks that may not like Assad, they say he should be extradited. Need to, to do their homework. Before running their mouths. So, um, I just got this on the post, on, on a tweet. This like came out yesterday from antiwar.com. And I haven't talked talk to um, narrate their stuff for a while. So, so I'm going to talk about this here Assange Extradition, The Deadly Magistrate. This is by Craig Murray. Mark Somers, QC, the extreme erudite and bookish second counsel for Julian Assange in his extradition hearing, trembled with anger in court. Magistrate Vanessa Barrister had just made a ruling that the names of Julian Assange's partners and young children could be published, which she stated was an interest of open justice. His partner has submitted a letter in support of his COVID-19 related bail application, which Barrister Barrister has summarily dismissed. To state he had a family to live in, live with in London, Barrister said that it was therefore in interest of open justice that the family's name may be, be made public, and said that the defense had not convincingly shown this would cause any threat to their security or well-being. It was, at this point, Somers barely kept control. 
He leapt to his feet and gave notice of an appeal to the high court asking for a 14-day stay. Barrister granted four days until 4 p.m. on Friday. I'm in lockdown in Edinburgh, but received three separate eyewitness reports. They are unanimous yet that yet again Barrister entered the court carrying pre-written judgments before hearing oral argument. Pre-written judgments, she gave no appearance of amending. Talk about prejudicial to the core, right? There have been two COVID-19 deaths in Balm Balmarsh Prison so far. For obvious reasons, the disease is ripping through the, the jail like wildfire. Department of Justice is admitting to one death and refuses to give statistics for the numbers, the number of, of cases. As even very sick prisoners are not being tested. The figures would arguably not mean much anyway. As the court heard at the bail application, over 150 Belmarsh prison staff are off work, self-isolating, and the prison is sacredly, scarcely functioning is the most complete definition of lockdown. The Prison Governors Association submitted to the House of Commons Justice Committee, which yesterday morning considered prisoner releases in closed session, that 15,000 nonviolent prisoners need to be released to give the jails any chance of managing COVID-19. The Department of Justice has suggested releasing 4,000, of whom just 2,000 have been identified as of a couple of days ago. Only about 100 had actually been released. The prisoner, prisons are now practicing cohorting across the estate, although decisions currently lie with individual governors. Prisoners who have a cough, any cough, are being put together in segregated blocks. The consequences of this are, of course, potentially unthinkable. Julian has a cough and a chronic lung condition for which he has been treated for years, a fact which is not in dispute. Yesterday, Barrister Gain uh, followed her usual path of refusing every single defense motion, following pre-written rulings, whether written or merely copied out by herself, if not, if no not. Even when the prosecution did not object, you will recall that at the first week of the extradition hearing proper, she insisted that Julian be kept in a glass cage, although counsel for the U.S. government made no objection to his sitting in the body of the court. And she refused to intervene to stop his strip searching, handcuffing, and removal of his court papers, even though the U.S. government joined defense. Incurring her claim, she had no power to do this, for which she was later roundly rebuked by the International Bar Association. Yesterday, the U.S. government did not object to a defense motion to postpone the resumption of the extradition hearing. The defense put forward four grounds. One, Julian is currently too ill to prepare his defense. Two, due to the COVID-19 lockdown, the access to his lawyers is virtually impossible. Three, vile defense witnesses, including from abroad, would not be able to present to testify. Four, treatment for Julian's mental health condition conditions has been stopped due to the corona COVID-19 situation. Barrister airily dismissed all these grounds despite James Lewis's QC saying the prosecution was neutral on a postponement and insistent that the May 18th date remains. She stated that he could be brought to the cells in Westminster Mastery Courts for consultations with his lawyers. Firstly, in practice, this is not the case. And secondly, these holding cells have a constant throughput of prisoners, which is obviously undesirable with COVID-19. It is worth noting that the prosecution stated that the U.S. government owned psychiatrists appointed due to, do, to do an assessment of Julian and had been unable to access him in Balmarsh due to COVID-19 restrictions. This is getting beyond me. It is getting beyond Mark Somers and defense team. Even before COVID-19 became such a threat, I stated that I had been forced to the conclusion the British government is seeking Assange's death and trial, the evidence that is now overwhelming. Here are three measures of hypocrisy. Firstly, the UK insists on keeping this political prisoner accused of nothing but publishing in a COVID-19 infested maximum security jail while the much derided Iranian government lets Danzin Zagari Ratcliffe out 
and hopefully we'll release her all together, which, it, which is a humane regime. Secondly, open justice is allegedly justifies the release of identities of Julian's partners and kids, while the state enforces the secrecy of Alex Salman's busted accusers, even though the court hard evidence that they specifically colluded to destroy him using as a deliberate tool the amity afforded to people making sexual accusations. Thirdly, nobody cultivates her own amity more than Vanessa Barrister, who has her existence carefully removed from the internet almost entirely. Yet she seeks to destroy the peace and young lives of Julian's family. Keep fighting for Julian's life and for freedom. And of course, there's a photo here about Peter sent me this rather good cartoon for which many thanks. And they absolutely. So, one thing you gotta look at, folks, is um, they could, they've done it to, they could do, if they're doing this to him, how many others are in the same predicament? The many pretty local prisoners, even in the states, for stand for what it was right, are in there unjustifiably. It's just an example. It's happening worldwide. The biggest mistake we'll make if the United States decides to extradite him. I know people, many people will, will support his cause. So the folks are ready to go. And I do say no to his extradition, and he needs to be released immediately, regardless if I like him or not. It's called principles, folks. That's why I don't really get involved in a lot of little political faction games. I stick to my principles. And everyone needs to do the same. If they can do this to your enemy, and you let it go, you could be next. So what's your call? I know where I stand. Hopefully, you will implement that or emulate it. And that is it. I made this one brief. I thank everyone for listening. Please feel free to download and share us on social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, if you say something that's interesting you want to check out, whatever you do, please send your correspondence to the quorum. I'll leave this footnote on my speaker page. Once again, thank you for your time. Please always remember that the maniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading love. May your guardian spirits be with you.